Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about the stablecoin market. More specifically, we're going to look at the total market cap of the top four and the interactions of the total market cap between all four of them. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com, links in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, we don't really often talk about the stablecoin market. We, we have put out a couple videos recently on things like the stablecoin supply ratio that gives you an idea of the purchasing power of the stablecoin market in terms of its ability to move Bitcoin higher. But in this video, I want to specifically talk about the stablecoin market cap um, you know, for the top four by, mar you know, by market cap. Now, I want to start off by saying in no way do I endorse a single stablecoin. Okay, in fact, it was over a year ago that I said I'm getting out of the stablecoin market because while I don't wish to see them go down, I also don't want to bet any of my own money on them. Now, at the time, that might have seemed silly, but after the collapse of UST and, and after the recent temporary depegging of both USDC and DAI, I hope people can understand why I took this fairly risk averse strategy. So while we are talking about the stablecoin market in this video, I just want people to know that all of all of my spare money is actually just in USD, um, not within the cryptoverse, just because I, I want to wait to see how the stablecoin market evolves here over the next several months and to see which ones can ultimately survive whatever potential regulation is coming. Um, now, with that said, we're going to be investigating the top four by market cap, and that includes USDT Tether at number three with a market cap of 80 billion, USDC with a market cap of 32 billion. Um, and we also have BUSD here at number 12 with a market cap of 7 billion. And then finally, we have DAI with a market cap of 5 billion. So clearly, um, clearly Tether and USDC make up by far the majority of the stablecoin market. And so what we're going to do is, is sort of look at, at what the total market cap of these stablecoins are is doing. And that way, maybe it would, it would actually make more sense to, or it, it, would, might, it might help people better understand the stablecoin supply ratio metric that we talked about not too long ago. If you look at the market cap of USDC, you can actually see that it's come down quite a bit from the peak that it hit back in the summer of 2022. In fact, the market cap of USDC since then is down about 41 to 42%. Now, some might argue that the market cap has gone down because people are, are quote unquote buying the dip. Although you could also argue that it's going down at least recently due to the recent fears in the temporary depegging of USDC. Now, of course, right now it is at least uh, found its peg. Uh, but I, I think that you can see that some investor confidence was shaken. I mean, none of this is financial advice, by the way. But if you look at, say, the, the USDC, USD chart, you'll notice that it was actually it, it actually depegged here very briefly and then came back up. But if you look at the date of this, this occurred on March 10th. Now, look at the market cap of USDC starting March 10th, if we sort of zoom in here. Okay, this is when it really started to, 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 to fall like a rock, drop like a rock, right? And, and the market cap of USDC fell from 43 billion, currently sitting at 32 billion, and there's not any clear indication that it's done dropping. So the market cap of USDC has continued to go down. Okay, now again, an optimist might look at that and say, well, that means people are buying the dip. A pessimist would probably look at it and say, well, if, if the stablecoin market was going up during a bull market, then at what point would something like this be seen in a different light? Um, the other one that I want to look at, though, is USDT, which tells a different story. If you look at USDT market cap, you'll see that, it, yes, it fell off in May of 2022, uh, you know, just before the summer of 2022, but recently it's actually started going back up, right? So could we argue that USDC is, is being used to, to quote unquote buy the dip or is USDT to some degree been absorbing some of that market cap? If you take a look at USDC's market cap plus USDT, what do you notice? It's been going sideways uh, essentially since late 2022. So I think the appropriate conclusion that I would come to is that there's been a significant amount of USDC arguably converted to other things like USDT um, and, 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 and probably some Bitcoin, some other cryptocurrencies as well. There has been 
at, at least to some degree, a flight out of USDC and into other stable coins and potentially into other cryptocurrencies as well. Now, another interesting thing to look at is the market cap of BUSD. Now, I believe they're no longer issuing this and it, it would make sense to see that it's dropping quite quickly, right? So the market cap of BUSD, which was at around 23 billion not that long ago, has now fallen about 69% to again, only 7 billion. And then finally, if we take a look at the market cap of DAI, you'll see that it's also been dropping really since 2020, uh, since February of 2022. So the question that this raises, right, is any individual stable coin is going to be somewhat noisy because you don't know if the market cap of that stable coin is going down because it's going into, into say Bitcoin or Ethereum or the altcoin market, or if it's going into the stable coin market or you know other stable coins, we don't really know. But one thing we can do is we can take USDC's market cap plus USDT plus DAI and then plus BUSD. And what happens if you add all four of them together? You get a pretty compelling trend, right? And what is that trend? Well, since May of 2022, the trend in terms of the market cap of stable coins has just simply been down, right? And again, it started, the market cap over here was only about 5 billion, right? And, and during the bull market, it went to all the way up to around 151 billion. Now, since its height, the stablecoin market cap, at least consisting of the top four, which arguably captures a majority of it, and most everything else would likely be negligible in terms of its effect on the total market cap of the stablecoin market, the total market cap is down about 22 to 23% over the last year, okay? Now, I've tried to, you know, I struggle honestly to, to try to understand what exactly this means, because again, the optimist would say, well, that means people are, are, are putting their stable coins in, into, you know, into other cryptocurrencies, right? Like Bitcoin and Ethereum, et cetera. But a pessimist would say, well, the stablecoin market cap has been going down since, you know, since May, right? And, and there's been plenty of lower lows in, in a lot of different cryptocurrencies since then, including Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin had a low in, in June. It also had another low in November all while the stablecoin market was going down. So I don't really know that that's the best case um, to be made, but I, I would argue that it, it shows some level of, of outflows from the cryptoverse, as unfortunate as it is. And you know, I, I do think that after we get some regulation and uh, or at least regulatory clarity, then I, I think you'll see more flows come back into the cryptoverse and you'll likely see uh, some of these things go back up. But until there's more clarity on on what it is these things even are, until we know, um, you know, until investors are more confident, I think, the more likely trend for the stablecoin market is in fact down in terms of the total market capitalization. And again, I mean, you know, if, if you were to sort of just extra extrapolate this trend, it would only take until, say, November for the market cap to get down to about 100 billion or so. And this is, you know, at the at the pace that it's currently falling off. Right. If you were to sort of draw the trend line and extrapolate it out, although extrapolating is somewhat dangerous, um, you can see that that it would sort of hit that 100 billion mark by the end of the year. Now, one thing that I think is is also worthwhile to consider is in terms of We've talked a lot about you know, the stablecoin supply ratio and the Bitcoin dominance. Now, one, one thing about the dominance is that a lot of people have said, well, the dominance is never going to, for Bitcoin is never going to go back up to its, its prior levels of, say, 70 to 75 percent because of the stablecoin market. And honestly, I, I would tend to agree with that. I, I don't really necessarily think the dominance is going to go back to 75 percent, but I could see it going back to 60 percent. And one of the reasons, of course, is because if you think of the stablecoin market, it's, it's currently acting, I believe, as a tailwind for Bitcoin dominance, because if the stablecoin market cap is going down and, and we've seen the Bitcoin dominance going up, one reason that the dominance might go up at some point is not just because the altcoin market is bleeding back to Bitcoin, but also because the, the stablecoin market is simply having a, a less and less effect, right? The market cap of stablecoins is going down and therefore is sort of taking away some of that, some of that market share uh, or some of the market share that the stablecoin market had has been taken away. And if this trend continues, and I, I, I imagine it's only going to continue that trend. But when you think about the stablecoin market, 
one of the things we've talked about is the stablecoin supply ratio. And the reason why I like that metric is because it generally shows the sort of the, the ability of the stablecoin market to sort of support the price of Bitcoin to a higher level. And, and this metric doesn't really go back that far, but you can see there's been three times when we got above the, bo the, the, the Bollinger Band over here. So if you, if you just look at the stablecoin supply ratio, um, it's this orange line right here. If you look at it in the context of its Bollinger Bands, it looks like this. This is the third time it's really been above this level. So in the, fir the first time was back in May of 2019. So it first got above it in May of 2019. And when it first got above it in May of 2019, you'll note that Bitcoin continued to go higher. But upon the next level up, the stablecoin market could really no longer support the price of Bitcoin at, you know, at too much higher valuations than 14K back then. And therefore, you, know, you can see that it, it slowly came back down. A similar thing occurred back in, in 2020 and early 2021. You can see that we went above the Bollinger Bands. And once we got above it in late December, um, you know, the, the price of Bitcoin stabilized a little bit, and then it actually went into this distribution phase that I'm sure many of us uh, are, are very familiar with. And then we eventually, you know, sort of came back down to earth. And then we find ourselves in a similar predicament again, where, you know, we're sort of flirting with that upper Bollinger Band, meaning the, the stablecoin market cap is having, it's not to say that Bitcoin USD can't go up, but it's to say that the stablecoin market is having, it's going to be harder and harder for the stablecoin market alone to, to support uh, the current prices just because the stablecoin market cap has been going down um, very, very quickly. There's not really a lot of new flows in the stablecoin market. And so that's why we continue to spend you know, a significant amount of time up here. And we first got back above this back in, in January. And really since then, we've been you know, just above it for most of it. Most of the time we have gone below it uh, just a little bit. We are getting pretty close to getting back below it, uh, but we're not quite there yet. The, the, the way that this could go down with without Bitcoin USD going down would be for there to be a lot more inflows into the stablecoin market. But as we said before, you know, this this trend here, at least so far, seems like it's down. So until something changes, I don't really think that we should assume that a different outcome is going to um, uh, that a different outcome is going to occur. And if you look at the sort of the stablecoin supply ratio oscillator, it looks something like this. Note that this level here is the same level that we came to in 2019. Note that when we got to this level in 2019, it actually did not mark the top. Um, we had one more one more move higher. Note that this one also did not mark the top because when we hit this one, I believe at like 27 or 28K, and at least so far we've gone to 29K, uh, still sort of pending on on if that's the finale of it or if it will or if it will continue on higher. The, the last thing that I wanted to mention is how, how the deterioration of the stablecoin market cap acts as a tailwind for the Bitcoin dominance. And I, I wanted to sort of show that if you look at the Bitcoin dominance comparison, this is what it looks like. And you'll notice that the yellow sort of the yellowish green line here is the stablecoin market. Um, so, so, so you have two different ones here, right? So this one is without stablecoins, the one on top, the green yellow one. And then this orange one is with uh, with stable coins. So you have with stable coins and without stable coins. And what you'll notice is that the without stable coins is actually catching up, meaning that it's going up quicker than the dominance, including stable coins. And the way to visualize this is to add a formula here. We're going to say take M3 minus M2. So M3, as you can see, is Bitcoin dominance without stable coins. M2 is with stable coins. If you evaluate that, switch it over to a linear scale. You can see, and let me just hide everything else so that it's a bit more clear. You can see that the delta between the dominance, including and excluding stable coins, is actually going down. At one point, it was all the way up near 10%. Now it's it's below 6% and continuing to fall, which arguably is still another tailwind for the Bitcoin dominance to go higher. Um, you know, assuming this trend continues. So I just wanted to provide this sort of this insight into the stablecoin market. Um, you know, there have been some outflows here and we've seen the market cap of USDC go down. We've seen the market cap of BUSD go down and DAI go down. USDT has been going down as well. Recently, it popped back up though. I think part of that though is likely the conversion uh, or people, some people moving from USDC to USD just because of the recent depegging of USDC. But again, I do not endorse any of them and I, I prefer to just sit in USD um, at the current time. 
and 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 finally just remember I'll, I'll just leave you with the with the chart that we had earlier if you if you overlay all of them uh, you can see a pretty clear downtrend in the stablecoin market cap which is 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 in a, certainly an interesting trend uh, that I've been following here for a little while I don't really think it's going to turn back up until you see some type of regulatory clarity um, to give you know to give investors some more confidence in in the stablecoin market or if there's if there is no more uh, if, if that doesn't come for a while, then I imagine that this stablecoin market cap will just continue to go down. And, and the difficult part about that, again, is that as the stablecoin market cap goes down, it becomes sort of a, a headwind for, for you know, non-stablecoins to continue to go up uh, because the purchasing power of the stablecoin market is just simply not what it was, right? I mean, if again, in the short term, it can, it can prop up prices if people convert their stables to, to say, Bitcoin or Ethereum. But um, if... You know, if, if this doesn't go back up at some point, then that purchasing power slowly diminishes over time. But again, if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Again, we do have Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. Make sure you check out that sale. We do have different tiers available, including a free one. Links in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.